Didn't feel very summery today. That wind out of the northwest today, it had a little bite to it in the morning hours. If you were out and about, you may have felt just a little bit of a chill. Once we got into the afternoon, we actually made it into the low 70s. It felt nice today. It was a really pretty day, just as pretty as yesterday. 69 is where we sit right now in Nashville, not a passing puffy cloud in the sky. That's what most conditions look like. Still a little breezy in some spots. Lawrenceburg, the trees still rustling a bit there. You're in the low 70s. So our gusts are still noticeable. Winds are gusting around 30 miles an hour right now in Nashville. The sustained speed not quite as strong, but especially for folks on our northern tier and for folks east, it's, it's definitely a little noticeable. 21 miles per hour is the sustained speed right now in Crossville, closer to 15, 10 to 15 for areas north. As we head into the overnight hours tonight, the wind will relax. Calm winds and clear skies are the perfect recipe for a cold night, especially after a cold front comes through. So while some of us are still in the low 70s right now, We've got a big drop in just the next 12 hours. By this time tomorrow morning, most of us will wake up in the low 40s. That's a solid 30 degree drop from our highest point today. For areas east and our higher elevations, some upper 30s. So while frost not expected to be widespread, especially if you're in a sheltered spot, one of sort of the low lying, smaller little valleyed areas in the plateau, you could see a little patchy frost tomorrow morning. Won't last long. Shouldn't be something that you needed to be terribly concerned about for any plants. Even with another system sliding towards us and more cloud cover around, we'll still be near 70 tomorrow. Our next weather maker is coming out of the panhandle of Texas. This is expected to track due east essentially over the next couple days, and it will bring a return of rain and some thunderstorm chances to our area. For tomorrow, most of what you'll notice is just cloud cover increasing. Our best chance for rain doesn't come until the morning hours of Thursday through lunchtime. A larger, more vigorous complex of storms is expected to move across the southern Gulf Coast states, so Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, once again under the gun for the potential for some strong to severe storms over the next couple days. I'm going to talk more about that at 630. Here at home, we're not looking at severe weather, but definitely some stronger storms possible Thursday morning with gusty wind and heavy downpours. Our main concern, Rory, by Friday we're dry, and then our next chance for rain slides in on Saturday. Bree, thank you. New and improved tornado sirens are coming right now to Davidson County. The Office of Emergency Management just started installing the new sirens all around the county. This includes 20 new locations, which will be tested for about 20 seconds or less when the weather is clear. Upgrades to the system will cost almost $2 million. All installations are expected to be completed this year. Metro Council meets tonight to take up several key issues for the city. One issue is a resolution authorizing the Metro Law Department to settle the claim of Shondell Brooks for $35,000. The lawsuit against the city is in connection to the death of Aquila De Silva during the Waffle House shooting. Another resolution relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. It asks the mayor's office and Metro Public Health to partner with Meharry Medical College to seek grant funding to track how the virus has impacted minority and rural communities. These are just two of a list of key issues up for debate tonight, and we got you covered. We'll have an update tonight at 10, and you can download the free News Channel 5 app to have updates sent straight to your phone. A local business adapts to keep customers safe from COVID-19 at the gas pump. Plus, Tennesseans proving every day that kindness isn't canceled just because of a pandemic. How volunteers are stepping up next on News Channel 5 at 6. Attendants at a local gas station are pumping gas for customers to stop the spread of COVID-19. News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen stopped by today as customers stayed safe in their vehicles. Usually only four pumps are full service, but right now amid COVID-19, every single pump here is full service Monday through Friday from 9 to 6. There's no telling how many people have touched a gas pump. Literally thousands. That's why attendants at Little Brother Shell on Franklin Road in Brentwood pump gas for their customers, according to service manager Avery Smith. There are germs everywhere. And, and your hands carry germs more than anything. Customers like Amber Banks say it was a pleasant surprise. Why not stay as safe as we can? She came prepared to pump her own gas, but was happy someone else did it. Absolutely, yeah, and it's just, uh, uh, you know, I saved myself a pair of gloves. Attendants also clean off windshields while wearing gloves, and they can wear a mask if they want to. And they keep a bottle of disinfectant spray. We're continually wiping the pumps down. We're wiping the handles down. 
Uh, we wipe off each and every credit card that we touch. Have a great day. Stopping the spread of COVID-19 takes a village. We really want to serve the community and try our best to keep our customers safe. And anything that they need us to do, we're more than willing to do. Things have gone so well, the Shell station might keep all pumps full service when the coronavirus crisis is over. Thank you very much. There's a really, really good chance that we will uh, because we remember in the old days where all gas stations were always full service. And we like that concept because it gives us a personal relationship with the customers. Reporting in Brentwood, Alexandra Cohen, News Channel 5. Now, full service does not cost extra, and they will check your tire pressure and your oil if you have the time. Saving lives during the COVID-19 pandemic while proving kindness isn't canceled. TC Restaurant Group partnered with the American Red Cross for a blood drive on Broadway today. Now, since the pandemic and safer at home order took effect, blood donations have slowed down, leaving a dangerously low supply of blood. That's why restaurant employees, musicians and locals came together to give back. This is something that we can do during this time, and we can't wait to be back up and running. We can't wait for Broadway to be restored to its former glory, but until it's safe to do so, we have to think of more creative ways to give back to our community. Everyone who donated blood got a free lunch, a swag bag, and a $100 grocery gift card from TC Restaurant Group. If you'd like to give blood, you can make an appointment through the Red Cross website. And it's a push to make sure our local frontline healthcare workers have a hot meal. Cracker Barrel is partnering with Sony Music Nashville and country star Chris Young to provide 5,000 meals. Some of those meals will go to TriStar facilities across the mid-state, and others will go to hospitals in Texas and Florida. Here at News Channel 5, we're dedicated to making sure you and your family are safe, informed, connected, and encouraged. If you see kindness in your community, let us know about it. You can also stream our entire series right now online or through Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV. It's clear now that we are living in a historic era. That is why the Heritage Foundation in Williamson County actually wants to preserve stories from this pandemic for future generations. They're looking to store journals, photos, stories, and videos in an online time capsule. You can submit your stories now. We have a link on our website. Well, Tennessee is not the only state reopening soon. How some of our neighbor states are following suit. A Navy ship sees hundreds of cases of COVID-19. Now officials are trying to find out how things got so bad. And are you finding yourself worrying more about your parents than before? How the pandemic has caused a bit of a role reversal between parents and their adult children. Happening now, parts of Interstate 40 are back open in Wilson County after a cargo fire this morning. THP tells us the truck had a mechanical issue around 945 this morning near Linwood Road. That's when the truck caught fire. The truck had general cargo, so luckily hazmat was not needed. Crews were on scene all day, but were able to clear things up just in the last half an hour. It's now just Tennessee planning on reopening some businesses, despite some concern that it's too soon. Now, Georgia, South Carolina, and Alaska are also making the big change. We're still in a serious situation, but also South Carolina's business is business. The White House has recommended states see a sustained 14-day drop in COVID-19 cases. It is a question fueling debate around our state. Should Governor Lee open Tennessee again? We break down the issue tonight on Open Line. It's on News Channel 5 Plus at 7 o'clock. You can also catch it live, of course, on all streaming platforms. A week of negotiating leads to another massive relief package, this one costing $480 billion. The Senate just passed it this afternoon. The Senate is continuing to stand by the American people. The hard work of bipartisan negotiation paid off. The package will give more money to small businesses and hospitals and now must be passed in the House. Lawmakers say the Paycheck Protection Program still has hundreds of thousands of applications waiting to be processed. That program ran out of money after just two weeks. The U.S. Navy and the CDC investigating that COVID-19 outbreak on board the USS Theodore Roosevelt. More than 700 crew members tested positive for the virus. One sailor died. The investigation will look to find the origin of the outbreak and understand how it spread so quickly on the ship.
The Roosevelt's commander, Captain Brett Crozier, was fired earlier this month after he wrote a letter stressing the need for action on the issue. Then Navy Secretary Thomas Modley said Crozier used poor judgment. Modley then resigned days later over his handling of the incident. The FDA has approved the first at-home coronavirus test. They're called Pixel by LabCorp COVID-19 test home collection kits. They allow patients to collect nasal swab samples at home and then mail them in for the results. The FDA says LabCorp will make the tests available in the upcoming weeks. People will need to have a doctor's order, though, to get the kit. Experts predict the U.S. will have to spend about $100 billion to perform the tests needed to safely lift restrictions. The Rockefeller Foundation calls for 3 to 30 million tests a week. Harvard's Center for Ethics says the country will need to do 20 million tests a day to handle the pandemic. Both reports cast out that the U.S. is ready to responsibly reopen. If you are expecting to get your stimulus check in the mail, now is the time to begin watching the mailbox. The Treasury Department says